Hello and welcome back to the Marvel Snapcast. I'm your host, the one and only STG, the Super Tech God, here with my co-host. This gentleman loves to sax. Yes, that's right. He does sax. Just came off a huge saxathon. The one and only. It's Guess Gaming. How you doing, Guess? Oh, hi. Good, man. Good, 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 good. Yeah, there's there has been a a lot of saxophone to really just drive that point home. Uh, a lot of saxophone over the last week. We had a a saxathon to prepare and figure out getting to Tampa for SnapCon. And sure enough, the community is absolutely beyond supportive and amazing. And there's been a lot of people on the back end that have helped out with a lot of things to try to figure out what we need to do to make it happen. And I'm happy to say that this community made it happen. So I will be in Tampa next week. And uh, I'm already talking with Felicity and there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff because I will officially 100% guaranteed be there now. So this little red saxophone has been more well. than a lucky charm, more than a lucky charm. Go. So thank you guys from the, to the entire community. Um, but you might notice the intro is a little different today. Uh, I just want to point it out there that Sino has a week off. Sino has to take care of life because we all have that occasionally in this gaming world. Uh, this I mean, I don't know what a life is. I play Marvel Snap. I just I make content for a living. I don't know what that is, but uh, but Cena will be back next week. No worries. We got some. We got some good changes. We got some good things coming up in the pipeline. So tech, it's just you and me, man. I, are you? Is. This is weird. It's quieter. I, I love Cena. Don't get me wrong, but it's quieter. It is very quiet, and um, you know, <laughs> your eyes look great, by the way. I like how your eyes look. <laughs> We're not making it. <laughs> But that is right, ladies and gentlemen, Sino is taking a week to travel all the way to Tampa from New York City. So he's starting tonight to get there for next week, uh, making some stops along the way. He might be stopping in your hometown or whatever the case is. But nonetheless, if you want to see us all and have a good time over in Tampa, make sure you guys come on down to SnapCon. You got a week away, a week left. Tickets are still available only a few, though, so make sure you get there as soon as possible. Felicity.gg is the website you can go to and try to get those tickets. We're going to have a good time. I know we're going to have a blast. Guess I cannot wait. Oh, my God. And, uh, yeah. Of course, myself, Sino, and Guess, when we get together, it is a movie. I promise you mm -hmm. that. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. I uh, I may or may not be going randomly live just from my phone <laughs> oh, all the time. I may or may not have an unlimited data plan. For the week that we're there, I may or may not be putting a bunch of this unnecessarily on Twitch. Um, so may or may, I don't know, may or may not. May or may not. We'll, 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 we will find we'll out. But nonetheless, we have a new season in Marvel Snap, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. New season, the Young Avengers are here. Uh, that's awesome news. I know we're pumped. We were all enjoying the Deadpool season, um, the Deadpool Diner. That was a very fun event. Shout out to guests again for putting such a wonderful video together to help people understand how to play it. And hopefully you all were able to get Cassandra Nova and the others of you that wanted to grind out to get that variant got that variant. Now, this new season, of course, starts off with the Young Avengers and, of course, its main character, which is um, Kate Bishop, a.k.a. Hawkeye. Now, before we dive into that card, I know this season is coming with a plethora of awesome things new cards new locations and also a new game mode uh, we'll get into that a little bit later but how do you feel yes i mean deadpool diner felt like a phenomenal season with all the cool cards and that new mode and now we're going to a new season where they're keeping that you know momentum going how do you feel about this new season so far i mean the momentum's just been positive i think just overall as a community since that first day of Deadpool's Diner where there was an unnecessary, let's be honest and sorry and not favoritist at all, just legitimately, I think it was an unnecessary amount of negative pushback that Second Dinner received on the game mode. It was like, geez, oh my God, like, okay, fine, I get it, I get it. It's, you have opinions, people, I get it. But I'm curious to see Second Dinner release the information to us on exactly how many people got Cassandra Nova in Deadpool's Diner? I'm re I've been poking repeatedly 
to get this information. And the second I know it will go out on Twitter, but like I am trying and they want to reveal it is what it sounds like, but they want to get the right information. So they got to do the research and I'm like, okay, that's fine. That's fine. You know, how many participated versus how many didn't and how did they obtain it? And how, what was the average bub per person? If you will, like they're getting, they're going to, you know, it's second dinner. It's their business. They got to break down all those numbers to learn from them for the next iteration of Deadpool's diner. But I think that like I project that it's probably like 75 to 80% of people got it, got her. That's what I personally think. I don't know about you, but I personally think that it's a very high number, which means minus that first day we left on a really good note. And then we had an OTA and a patch in the same week. Yes. And we had two cards come out with a new season. It's just like, it's been a really positive, you know, and, right. and, and I quote, it's a great time to be a Marvel Snap player. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, the meta is in a great place. Oh, I don't want to say it and jinx it. I'm not going to word. But nonetheless, we also had some other things that you did left out. I know a lot of people didn't really talk about it or even promote it, but we had some awesome rewards for referring a friend yeah play the game so True. um i did finally get my domino variant from the mother of my son she played it and she got the battle pass for kate bishop and i finally received my domino variant today nice. so the god does have his variant but that was also a, another awesome cool thing that second dinner did doing the deadpool um season as well as all these wonderful drops we've had um it's, it was one heck of a season and i'm waiting to see how Young Avengers will try to top that. So um, I'm happy for it. Momentum is great. And like I said, I love the current state of the game. Back to you. You're right. This is a great time to be a Snap yeah. player. Told you, man. So, it's great. That was fantastic. It's fantastic. So we have Kate Bishop, a.k.a. Hawkeye. Um, great season pass card. Um, she reminds me kind of of the two-cost Nico in the game. With the mm-hmm. ability that she can now give us additional and other one cost cards to every time she's played. Um, of course, we have the acid arrow, um, which switches sides, kind of like a uh, green goblin, but a you know a green arrow. We'll call it. Oh, I want to call it a green arrow. Foolish. Yeah, I was about to say you, you can't. <laughs> we can't call it a green arrow. You do Not realize that. for <laughs> several reasons. <laughs> Deadpool just came out acid. as a film. Acid Let's arrow. <laughs> Uh, we the, yeah, there you go. See, we have the basic arrow, uh, which of course, which is on reveal. You get plus three next turn, so kind of replaces the real Hawkeye. Not too bad. And of course, we have the grapple arrow, which is pretty cool. You kind of yoink the card you play after, so kind of reverse of our girl uh, Ghost Spider. Yeah. Then we have the PIMP arrow. Oh, sorry, the PIM. Mm-hmm. There you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> Ongoing. If your side is full plus three power so yeah i think kate bishop um i did get her day one um been climbing the ranks i didn't play too much um but i'm at 84 i had it in a deck with of course the other card we're going to discuss shortly and i think she is a phenomenal two cost card uh we talk about the one cost of two cost cards this one is definitely up there i think this is a great season pass card especially for the theme and right after deadpool Wow, yes. Um, I'm gonna give this card a wonderful plat. It is it is definitely diamond for me. I'm not gonna go platinum. Um the reason reason being other way around is diamond is the highest. Let's well, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna give it a oh, you're giving it the highest. My bad. Yeah, Let me shut my mouth. I I'm gonna give it a diamond. Yes. Uh yeah. the reason being is I don't think we've still yet fully tapped the potential of this card. And it's already very good. Like, I am not seeing bad reviews on the card in any way for any reason. I'm seeing it in move decks. I'm seeing it in destroy decks. I'm seeing it in clog decks. I'm seeing it. It it is such a flexible card. Like you said, like two cost Nico with a little bit more control. Yes. And because you have to factor in that extra energy usage because it is more energy over time, two for her plus then the ones each for each of the cards that yes. you then do choose to play. I, I still think we are yet to learn the best variation of this card and it's already high performing and it's already an incredibly strong card. Um, 
for me, the only thing that feels clunky is just getting used to the grapple arrow and trying to capitalize on that specific effect. But I want, I want to capitalize on it more because the animation on that thing is absolutely fire. fire. Like they did a really good job with all, all of these cards. Granted, they're just like small variations. Like even the one that's not the basic one brought to you by Starbucks, the basic arrow (laughs) is you know, basically a, an updated version of the Hawkeye effect with a little more cleanliness to it. And it looks great. It, everything from this card was very well thought out, very well executed. It doesn't replace your Ant-Man because it's still one, like for the, the PYMP card, it is still one less than Ant-Man. So it, it competes, but doesn't replace it. It doesn't yeah. do the exact same thing as Ghost Spider, but then still has a little more benefit to it for the Grapple Arrow. Acid is not any better than vipering over, if you will, the hood or a goblin. It's still just a little, it's like just perfectly giving those nods to those other cards with the exception of literally straight up Hawkeye. And that could lead to an adjustment later on. But I do think that it is a a incredibly well-rounded card and it is still getting better which is why I put it all the way up there at Ooh. the very top because Jeez. it's already a platinum plus double platinum card and right. we're still learning more with it, which means the ceiling is even higher. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it's already there. That it's at diamond. Wow. I mean, listen, yeah. I hear you. I agree with you. We are just seeing how mostly in the zoo decks, but, um, and like you said, every other deck people put in destroy, et cetera. I mean, the fun one I've tried is playing her with, um, the wonderful, uh, Grandmaster flipping her, getting more, and then you can black swan all her wonderful arrows, making them zero cost, and just do madness. I mean, that's pretty fun too, but that's something yeah. different. And I think you're right; she can just, you know, that ceiling hasn't reached it yet. But I'm gonna keep her in the in the platinum range because my diamond card is up next, ladies and gentlemen, and that is the one and only Marvel Boy. Yes, what a name, Marvel Boy! Yeah, he's marvelous. Um, but to me, this is a diamond card. The fact that He's sitting there just pumping out power to your one cost cards every turn. Three of them, not one, not two, but three of them, I think is phenomenal. Um, yes, he is great in a zoo deck. Yes, he is great in a infinite with Sunspot Nebula deck. Yes, he's great in a yeah. destroy deck, right? He's great in a move deck. It's just Marvel Boy is, I think, a great card. He could have been also the season pass card to me. Either one of them could have been. And that's why I'm yeah. making my diamond pick of this season. He is going to be the best card and my diamond pick. How do you feel about the wonderful Marvelous Boy? I, I'm not as high as you. I am currently at just straight up platinum, possibly even double gold. Um Ooh. the only okay. the only reason is because because of the, if you want to maximize his effect, right? You want to get out as many of those one costs early on and then drop him down on three. Generally in that game plan, that's very weak, very weak. So now you start rethinking about, okay, what else can I do here? Because right now Killmonger is everywhere because of Marvel yes. Boy specifically and Kyra's stocks are going through the roof because of it. Yep. But the, the alignment of getting it all to, to to play out i don't it it just there's a little clunk to it because i feel like i'm constantly missing out on tech at the chance of having a stronger one cost card and for marvel boy to have a valid effect he has to like in my opinion he has to go down on turn three or at the latest um even when you drop him on turn five he has to then have two full activations to be worthwhile because for me to get the value out of Marvel Boy that I personally think is worth it, it needs to be justified as either looking at it as Gladiator or looking at it as Mr. Sinister because that's a widespread of extra power that you're dispersing. You're looking at three, six, seven, or eight, and that means you got to have at least two procs so he can't go down on the final turn in the game. Otherwise, he's just uh, okay-ish. And right. I think that a lot of people are very pigeonholed on the, what we'll call the, the eight card deck because it's Squirrel Girl and then put squirrel, Squirrels on the board and then Marvel Boy somewhere else. And now you've only got eight spots left on the deck, on the board to run the right. rest of the deck. And it, 
feels a little pigeonholed. And I just don't think that we're fully there on understanding do we need to have Marvel Boy at 3-2 giving out plus ones to three cards or could this card even be tweaked to be even better? Um, yeah. I, which I personally yeah. would love to see. I think that they could yeah. give him as Fine. just just give it to two of your cards and make him a three four. Plus two. You know, or, or no. Give him plus two power. No plus two power is too much. Yeah. Way, way too fucking much. Way too fucking much. No way. Yeah. If they won't do that to the arrows for yeah, girl, you know, yeah. Kate Bishop, they're not gonna give his effect to give plus twos. Like because you gotta think of Misty Knight, same way for the Evo, it's just giving those plus ones out there. It's the same yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just, I'm not as high on Marvel boy, even though for what he does in zoo specifically, he brings the value of zoo way up, but he's yeah. clunky in that exact measure because right. you want him to be really good and you want him to be hitting those one cost cards early. But if you don't put them down on turns one and two, you can't fill the rest yeah. of your curve with Kazar, blue Marvel, big six thing. It yeah, doesn't it doesn't it doesn't fit the yeah, same way. I no, I, I get it. I mean him being a three cost is something that's tricky. He should have been a, a little bit lower, I think. It'd probably a two cost. But um I'm with you on that. I totally get it. My thing is um the way I was playing him, which worked out way better than I thought, was with War Machine, Infinite, Ebony Ma, Sunspot. Um I didn't care about any other ones. I just needed those two ones in a lane yeah. with armor, right? Armor on two sunspot and ebony mind that lane at marvel boy anywhere else and just needs him to buff those two one cost cards for me and then on turn four i could either play um i could play what's her name uh psylocke and then skip turn five and drop infinite and she hawk wherever i want or i can play you know um our wonderful jessica jones in that lane with those one cost let that buff drop infinite some with the marvel boy making 23 somewhere else so i think because people focus on him more on zoo what you're saying is absolutely right because playing him in zoo is super clunky right now at this moment right squirrel girl you got to play dazzler on two then yeah. you gotta play marvel boy on three and yeah. now you gotta get your other ones out for the other three turns and it's just like why you know so i'm t i'm totally with you on that but i think if we play him in other card lists whether it be destroy focusing on the one cost or even move focusing on um the human torch i think he works out better that way nonetheless yeah. i like your i like your um your rate for, your rating for it I just think, wow, double gold? Come on. I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm not fully there, but I'm still at platinum because he's still good. Let me get that, get that clearly across. Okay, he's still good, yeah. but yeah. Uh -huh. it just, it, there's constantly, there's a push and pull constantly on, on when right. do you play him, and what do you take out to fill the curve the same way, and that's okay. where I feel like there's, there's some distance with marvel boy right now totally understandable which leads us to our next topic which of course is the wonderful ota predictions right so as we know as you just mentioned you want marvel boy to be higher but i, I might i'm not going to take that from you that might not be your prediction we'll let you dive yeah. in to what ota predictions you may have all right so i, I kind of hinted towards one of them though not that um where i was talking about hawkeye and the basic arrow um i think that the basic arrow does either get adjusted down to giving plus two, so it's not exactly equal to Hawkeye, uh -huh. or they make Hawkeye go up and go to plus four, which would just be absolutely insane for bounce. But I, I would, if out of the two, I would expect the basic arrow to go down so. just slightly. So then in total, it's a one three, which then makes a hell of a lot of sense. That right. would be my case. But my my two other like major one cost adjustments um are quinjet i think quinjet okay. becomes a one one i think that it's justified okay. at this point nothing too crazy yeah. but enough to say hey we're paying attention and that energy cheat is justified any other energy cheat card is below rate in power you look at psylocke right. for example same thing sarah same thing quinjet energy cheat i think it's time make it a one one uh, the other one, because of the new cards coming out, is Quicksilver, actually, even though it's the first card that you get in the game, I say buff it. I say give it a 1-3, because the value of having him in your hand is the power, but that power is coming at the expense 
of ruining the rest of your draws literally the entire rest of the game because you dropped your percentages tremendously. So I right. think the cost and the effort of Quicksilver at 1-3 makes a lot more sense. Um, I'll say my two-cost one as well, and then I'll flip it over to you for the your ones and twos if you have any. Um, I say Scorpion gets a buff. I think Scorpion is an underplayed card. I think he goes back up. I think he goes to a 2-3. Um, we're starting to see Ajax, you know, try to make that push yes. to be the a top competitive deck, and it's almost there all the time. And I think yeah. it's okay for Scorpion to get its get its day in the sun right now. So I'd say make that a two three. Those are the ones I'm in the one cost and the two cost department that I would like to see uh, tweaked. For me, for the one cost, I was definitely leaning on Hawkeye as well. I think Hawkeye should get a buff. Um, I know you mentioned the arrow should get the decrease. But I think at this point, it gives you that ability to make that decision. I think Hawkeye should definitely become give the give that location, make it a one four or make him a one four after being played. So I'm going with him getting buff as my one cost card. Um, as far as the two cost cards go, what I have here, of course, is Grandmaster. I know they made him a two two, which is great. But I think with cards like Kate Bishop and Squirrel Girl, things that you want to kind of get out there and do more of. Um, especially with Marvel Boy, I think he needs to get a buff as well. I think Grandmaster should become a 2-4 and not be a 2-2. Two, two. Whoa, that's, that's Right now, big. Grandmaster, he's still not getting played, right? He's still not being played at 2-2. Two, two. I think he's getting played more at the 2-0 mark, right? Because you were throwing him in other card lists. Um, mm -hmm. You were throwing him with yeah. Pixie, right? So it was getting played more at a 2-0 than a 2-2. Two, two. So I think if you want to, I know 2-3 would have been ideal, but we just got um, Kate Bishop at a 2-3. I think him at a 2-4 would be phenomenal. That's my two-cost cards and my one-cost card. See, I'm actually completely the opposite on you. I think if you're going to buff him, you make him a 2-1. You actually okay. drop him down for the Ravona synergy again because one of his best plays when he was a 2-0 yeah, was the Ravona deck. Ravona. Yeah. And I think by sacrificing that power off of him to allow him to be in the Ravona deck, imagine him and your girl, your favorite card in Marvel Snap, the green goddess herself. Yes, of course. That's yeah. a free no, power I, I play. That. A free cost play. That's what it was before. So I agree. No, I like that. You know what? I take back my 2-4. Let's make it a 2-1. I'm down for that. I'm down for that. Because he needs to be played more. And I think the fact that he's a 2-2 two -two is not is not helping him. Yeah. Um, then, you want to talk your three costs? Yeah. My my three cost uh, is, is, is was just foreshadowed. Uh, it's Sage. Uh, I think I think Sage needs to be adjusted because she oh, is constant. I know, I know, I know. You can oh, hate me. It's fine. I know she's your favorite. I know she's your favorite. Oh my god! Honestly, I I know she's your favorite. So I'll I'll ask you this, okay? Yes, as, as someone who plays Sage way too fucking much, okay? I do. I know. Okay? I feel bad now. Yeah. What would you say is the average power on a single play of Sage? I'm not saying Wong or eight, Martage eight, or eight, eight and ten. Eight and ten? Yeah. Be beautiful. Thank you for justifying me making her a four zero. She's in a Ravona. She's in a Ravona list. Right. And on curve at a four cost card on the final turn of the game, where it's power plus other two cost card thing normally, like, you know, Shadow King, for example. Four cost cards are meant to kind of really hit well in that eight power to 10 power range at some kind of right. sacrifice at okay. four zero. I think Sage actually still does the job, still gets affected by Ravona. And I don't think the solve is to make her like a three, two to lose that synergy. It's not that sure, this is opposite. This is opposite than the, the grandmaster conversation. This is Sage showing that her numbers are consistently so incredibly high yet alone in decks where you, you know, proc her up multiple times or move her and then proc her again with yeah. Grandmaster or Wong or whatever. You see. She is consistently way over top rate. Too much that if you made her a four cost, it's in line with what you would expect that type of four cost card to do. Because the equivocal conversation with Sage also is, what do you replace her with? And what's the number one recommendation you always give? Wolfsbane. Does Wolfsbane, even when it doubles, get anywhere close to those numbers? No, 27 is as high if you get, well, 25 if you get Wong and Mystique. Right. 
card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus Sage, who's like way over 40. 40, 40 to 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's why I think Sage gets an adjustment to 4 0. Listen, she goes to 4 0, then the, the issue that comes there is the Sarah play on five no longer allows her to do a um, Sage Taskmaster on six. So now we're going to. Yeah, that's a whack, big whack. Cause that's that's basically the combo you want to pull off in most cases yeah. with Sage. You want to copy that power somewhere else. Um, her being a four cost is, I mean, I won't be up. I mean, I will be upset, but I won't be upset, right? It's not too bad. But I still yeah. think, right now, then what else kind of disturbs her piece? She doesn't work with Surfer anymore, you know. So that's kind of another thing that you know okay. I don't want to get and? into. I mean, and that's a problem. I mean, that's a big issue. I think the way I look at it, but. That was your pick, and that's fine. I listen, I understand from what you're saying. Um, I did. I said I did dread the day when Sage gets nerfed because she is she definitely one of the most powerful cards in the game that nobody thought about. Everybody slept on her like, what? Yeah. The only person that really mentioned something was you, right? You thought about it too, and I'm just like, yeah, she's going to be bananas. And yeah, nobody else really thought that. So um, yeah. she is out there more. That Sage just I put out two seasons ago, people are still using to this day to go to Infinite. So I, I totally understand. They might. I dread that day. But nonetheless, yeah. my three cost card that I think needs to get um, nerfed is Killmonger. I think Killmonger is way too powerful. He's been too powerful for a while. And I think not nerfing too bad, but just make him a four cost over a three cost. Um, also, also hand in hand would have to be Kyra. She'll have to be a four cost as well. Um, I think she should be a four six. Um, looking at curve right now, four or five, sorry, looking at curve, the way I look at it right now, um, especially when you're playing stuff like you said just now, zoo, everything else, you're having that issue where you have to play one, then your two costs. Now at three, you have to make a decision whether it be Marvel Boy or Kyra, right? You have both in your hand yeah. at that point. So if you get, if Kyra goes to a four, you could do the three cost Marvel Boy, Kyra on four, right? And you go the same thing with Killmonger. So now Killmonger. What that does also is kind of slow down one of the best card lists in the game today, and that is Destroy. I think Destroy has no nerfs, have never got a nerf. And one of my six cost cards that I'm going to talk about later is Null, right? I think Null needs to fall in line with every other card and only get its power when it's in hand, not in the deck or when it's on field and not in your hand. I think Null is way too powerful for the Destroy card list. And I think giving Killmonger that nerf, making more four costs, you're not worrying too. I mean, you could still kill your Deadpool on mm -hmm. curve. You can still go one, play Deadpool two, Carnage three, Venom four, Killmonger. I mean, you still get that synergy that you need. So um, that's my take. I think Killmonger and both Kyra needs to get an increase in power for Kyra with costs. And I think Killmonger should be a four cost. Put him in line with Shang Chi as well. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna do a four cost Killmonger, um, I don't know if you remember this way way back. There, I forget which OTA it was, but we got an OTA maybe like a year ago or something of that nature, where it wasn't in game, but on the website in yeah. the OTA notes, Venom had been getting adjusted from three, right. three to four, five. And right. they went through this whole explanation of saying, you know, try to fill the curve of destroy better. Da, 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 da. And that was their solve. I think if you move Killmonger up to four, he's got to be at least that. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think you, you keep him any, any lower. I think that's, it no. doesn't, it just doesn't straight up feel right. Um, four costs. Yeah. I think that you, by doing that, you actually hurt, that for the same, for the stronger argument versus what you gave earlier about Sage with Surfer, I think that Killmonger going up to a four cost and not having that Silver Surfer package of Nova Silver Nova in there too, I think if you remove that from Surfer, you actually kill Surfer more than if you move Sage out of Surfer range, you don't kill Surfer at all. Um, right, the best Surfer decks typically end up having Nova, Killmonger, Nova. with Killmonger. For both defense and offense in that state in that sense so i don't know how i feel about four cost thing uh oh random four cost idea also just throwing it out there um can we get white queen at least a four seven like yeah, no one plays white queen off. just 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 no. get just a feels good you know it's a feels yeah, good part yeah. just give me a four seven I white agree. queen just throwing that out there randomly i know it's a buff. One, one yeah, she, she need, 
Come on, guys. Come on, Glenn. Dude, come on. Help us out yeah. here. Because yeah, I, I got nothing. By the way, I got nothing in the five cost department. Uh, all the rest of mine's are six and higher. Okay, my five cost card um, is the one and only. Uh, listen, they did a good job. They took care of Doc Ock. Um, I think Doc Ock might need some love down the line. But right now, I think him pulling the weakest card, the weakest power card, it's not bad. It's good. I kind of enjoy it. Sandman has rose, risen from the grave because Leech got nerfed and Doc Ock got nerfed. And now everybody's playing the wonderful Sandman. They're playing, look how great this combo is. Turn one, Squirrel Girl. Yeah. Turn two, Dazzler. Turn three, Patriot. Turn four, Kazar. Turn five, Sandman. Turn six, Ultron. Look at the madness that's happening in the world today, guys. The madness. Yeah. Sandman was not nerfed. He was just parallel moved, right? He was ongoing, and now he's a um, mm -hmm. on on reveal. Um, I think he needs to go down in power. I think Sandman needs to come down a bit. I think his ability is way too strong to keep him at a five seven, um, because when you now play Doom in the lane with him, getting that extra five cost. I think that lane should become a 10 at least. So he should go down at least two, making him a 5-5 five, five, or even mm -hmm. lower. I don't think he deserves to be a 5-7. That is my take for the five costs. I'm going to throw a, a weird Sandman variation to you okay. just yeah. because it, it changes the entire structure of the card, um, but okay. still keeps the integrity integrity of what it does. What if you took Sandman and you completely reworked the benefit and the failure of only playing one card? You leave it at five cost. That's fine. Right. That's fine. Yeah, I'm with that. You, you drop it down to like five, two or five, three. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm with you. But you then have the ability to, instead of being restricted to one card, it's restricted to two cards, and you get plus one energy. If you're Sandman. You Sandman, on, it's an on reveal. Both yeah. players can only play two cards. Two cards, but you get the plus, plus one, one energy. energy. No, both sides. Oh, wow. Both sides. Two cards, seven energy. I like that. But it turns six to be seven energy. So yeah, that yeah. way you drop his power way to kind of like what Leech was when he was at five three. Like yeah, if you're yeah. gonna go really all in on that, do that. Or, or if you want to keep the integrity of the single card with Sandman, you do that, but then you make it like a ramp style card. You make it at like three cost. Yeah. You do it at yeah. like three two, you know, three one no. even. I like drop that. it way, way down. So that way you could do it as a ramp into something on five. Um or two cards on turn five. I think that right. Something along those lines with the control of cards, even if it's to control to two cards, um, which still doesn't feel 100% right. I think the control of one card is yeah. good. It's kind of like Electro Plus. Like Electro has the ongoing, and that's its downside. So maybe you make him a 3-1 right. that does one card for one turn for both sides, one but you turn. get one energy right. extra yeah, each. Energy. So, like messing with the energy piece to it, I think would be very cool. No, I agree. I like that because now you you have to think about playing that card because your opponent now gets a benefit, right? And if you're doing the whole Red Hulk thing, your opponent has Red Hulk, now you got to think about, damn, I got to actually use this energy or as my opponent's Red Hulk gets bigger. So I think yeah. I like that. I do like that kind of change to him. That's awesome. I would just figure lower him down to a five or less. So if people play Dr. Doom or whatever the case is, you can still... That won't fix it, though. Up. That's the no, thing. It won't no. fix it. Right. No, you're right. The two power less is a really matter too much but i do like the fact of giving that extra energy so second thing i know you guys watch this podcast every week we really appreciate you guys watching and oh yeah enjoy leaving comments second dinner so we heard what we just said just rework sandman because he is becoming a problem he's becoming the next doc Ock. so i yeah. think i think that's a great rework all yeah. right and what are six cost cards so I'm going to fire through them because I have five cards that I'd like to change. That bad. It's that bad. I'm going to fire through. They're easy. They're easy. Okay. Yeah. Number one, Galactus. Give him okay. one more power. One more. Yep. Buff him up. Just to a, just to a six, six. Number two, yep. Ultron, for very similar reasons that you were talking about. The Sandman. Just, Ultron, because all of those drones got the plus two. Plus two. I yep. think Ultron himself has to go down. Yeah. Drop him yeah. by two. Make him a six, six. Yes, let's um, go. Number three, 
Orca, very underplayed. Yeah. Needs to be respected a little bit more. I say give him one more power, make him a 612 that has that ongoing of plus six. So he has yes. a, ten, a technical potential of 618. Because that's, that's especially as there's been power creep, I think that that's justified. Uh, similarly, to make one of our loyal followers and friends, uh, White Wayne Brady, happy, Agatha. Uh, I think Agatha has justified herself as well. And Agatha Arisham is even a thing. Thank you, Tucker, for that amazing tournament. You know, I think that Agatha, though, could be justified at 16 even. I think a little higher. Yeah. Like, get it to yeah, destroyer yeah, level, power. you know, the, yeah. the the plus and minus that can come from it. So I think give her a little bit of something. And then the last one is Arisham, where it's not a power change. It's not a cost change. It's a mechanic change. And you give it the Thanos. Arisham starts in your hand. Yes, that needs to happen anyway. 1, Those are my five. Galactus up a power, Ultron down two, Orca up one, Agatha up two, Arishem starts in your hand at the beginning of the game. Wow. I love it. My six cost cards. Those are great. I think you left out one, and I'll get to that shortly. Um, okay. But my six cost cards, of course, is the wonderful two. I have a couple. but The main one, of course, you guys heard me earlier, was Null. Um, I think at yep. this point, Null needs to get the treatment like every other card that gets that treatment, where he's either going to be zero until he's played, or he can't get the destroy power in your deck. He has to be either in your hand or on the field. I think Null needs to get nerfed at that point. I think Null, it, the destroy is just so powerful, and it's never been touched in a long time. So what's the what's what the if you what if what if you did it to just like same exact effect, but yeah, only cards on your side. I like that too. Okay, I like that because well. I've, I've now, mentioned that one many, many, many moons ago. Because yeah. Null's really oppressive, um, in that it aspect. Is. But yeah, I I almost don't know if it's needed though, because it's literally the only thing holding that deck together. Yes, it is. Well, of course, and death. Yeah, no, I agree. It is the only thing holding it together. But I think the way they they did Hella, which is my next card, I think Hella now should get a buff back and make it negative one instead of negative two. I think the card should get negative one, so she still works with Ajax. She still okay. gets that, you know, that feeling of, hey, she's not that powerful because the cards come back with a negative one. I mean, what's the difference getting a negative one Iron Man versus a negative two? It's not really that much of a difference. I just, same thing with Infinite or, Gai or Giganto. I think negative one is totally fine. And again, it still allows you to work with Ajax and still gives Hell of the nerf everybody wanted. Wait, 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 wait. Rewind. The the 614 card, what's its name? Giganto. Okay. Because I swore oh, you said Giganto. Giganto. I'm like, who the People fuck is Giganto? People Why? pronounce it Giganto. I don't know. I just. It's a pun on gigantic. It's Giganto. Giganto. Please rewind. Yes, the, listeners, viewers, please rewind the tape. Make sure I'm not going crazy. I swear to God, he <laughs> yeah, said Giganto. Some people say Giganto too. Who does? Gia. A lot of people do. Listen, Maybe the Italian I'm, me goes Giovanni Giganto. Yeah, like I don't. Giganto, that's just, yeah. So how do you pronounce Kazar? It's Kazar. I call it Kazar. Right. So and then Marvel again, will go, "You're wrong. It's technically Kazar." But it's it's taken me a year and a half to just do good. it. Right. And that's what happened. Me too. I'm still on Kazar. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, but I get it. The hyphen is there, unless it's a Mandela effect, then. I guess I'm wrong, just like how Kit Kat. Yeah. Oh, we're not gonna oh. get to Mandela effects in here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's another time. That's another conversation. Another time. Um, yeah. And my last six cost card, mm. of course, the one and only um, Infinite. You mentioned every card getting power creep. Why are we leaving the Infinite out? I, I played the Marvel Boy Ebony Ma War Machine Infinite card list, and it's still difficult to win a lane with just the infinite. The fact that we still have to skip a turn is is killing me. And we only get that 20 power on that lane. I really, really strongly believe Infinite needs to get, I know I say it, I think he needs to get a nerf at this point. Whether you remove that you have to skip turn five or add some additional power to him. At you mean least, a buff then, okay. So yeah, yeah you want him buffed. Buff, not nerf buff, yes. Yeah. At this point we need it. I think because every other card just gets so so much bigger than him and they have no downsides and it's just like what's going on here like this is driving me bananas you know um so yeah i think those are my my six cost cards. Hopefully the more 
the more I sit on it, the more I'm okay with a power buff. And the reason I do is because you want to truly incentivize the float. You know, right. we really, we don't have too many cards that truly benefit off of float, right? Cool. You have Sunspot, of course. You have She-Hulk, she of course. Yes. Um, I, I think mean, Infinite could be just, it could easily be justified. Like, if you think of the average five cost card, right? The the baseline standard, Abomination, five, t- five nine. Same thing for Hulk, six twelve. So for 11 energy, that's 21 power. Yet for the yeah. same 11 energy, technically, you could play Infinite, which is right. 20 power. But yes. it hurts a little more to do that strategically. Yes. So right. maybe 622, 623, I could That's see that. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't look as sexy, let's be honest. No, but, but it, looks, it will work. It will be perfect. So It makes sense. Let's say, let's say we don't make him a six cost. Make him a five cost. Uh, 518. That's even worse. 520? It's not bad. No, I mean, honest, absolutely not. No, because then the best because then the best deck in the game is She Hulk and Infinite on turn six. Yes, fair. I mean it is that way now. There's too. no way you do that. You gotta drop it. You gotta okay. drop its power if you drop so, its cost. So and then, then it's not gigantic. And then sorry, then it's not uh Infinite. It's gotta be right. a six cost card. I'm with you, so we need more power. Fine. Make him a, no, make him a seven twenty five. You know what? I'm I'm good with that too. I'm one thousand percent good with that too. I think a seven twenty five would be really interesting for him. Yes, yes, I'm so down for that as well. Because now we have to find out ways to cheat him out, get him out there early, or he'll just be he'll just become discard bait at that point. Him and Ghost Rider will be the best thing on the planet. <sighs> he'd be good for discard. He'd be good for Hella. I mean, think about it. If nobody else, if you can't cheat out power, whether you get Magic or Hope Summers or even playing Psylocke or whatever the case is, and you got to have, you have an infinite in your hand, he's going to become discard bait. I can see the so, discard bait. I'm okay with that. Yeah, me too. But I'm going to say again, I'm, I'm with you. 622. Make him 623. Let's give him the Jordan number because he, he deserves it. He deserves okay. it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, he um, does. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, that's, that's my, uh, listen, as you guys know on this channel, and this podcast, we have made some great predictions and they all have come true. So let's see out of these conversations we had today, which predictions we're going to see in our next OTAs. Dun, dun, right. dun. Yes. Reaver. Dramatic Reaver. <laughs> Speaking of OTAs, um, we did have a patch come out the same week last week with the wonderful Deadpool season. And that patch came along a new game mode called Alliances. Now, we just touched on it last week. Uh, we are in the same alliance, myself, guests, you know, and um, some others from Power On Gaming. I know you guys heard of that wonderful group out there having a good time, doing big things, making the community feel nice and special, right? Is it, um, is it, we, it is very true. Yes, that's right. We have had a blast with it. Um, the biggest thing, I think, to come to Marvel Snap as a mode has to be, of course, the wonderful and only bounties, okay? So now, these bounties, I know some people have their favorites, some people stay away from some, some people enjoy them. Um, what are your guys' favorite bounties? And I uh, guess, I'm gonna start with you. What are you. What is your favorite bounties? Why are you saying guys like Cenos? You're phantom casting with Ceno right now. You realize that, right? I, like, uh, what, do you, what do you guys think? I'll start with, it's only fucking me here. You realize that, right? <laughs> Like it, Cino's a state to, away, if not two at I've this been, point, traveling. That's like, true. Travel, yeah, listen, right? I'm, I'm accustomed to it. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Guess how no, do you fine. feel? About <laughs> no, but for but for real though. Okay, so the bounties, the bounties was something that was actually the whole focus of my my day today. Um, oh, awesome. I okay. spent like five hours, I want to say it was, on stream today, look, just asking the community for information about the bounties that they have at that moment. Because what I want to do is I wanted I want to create and I think it'll be ready by tomorrow for I'll f- probably film it on Twitch and then put it up on onto onto YouTube. Um, the abbreviated list of these are the only decks you need for every possible bounty. Here you go. So that way you can like make these decks and leave them in your collection and they're ready to go because every possible two card pairing is in this this list of decks right. and and that's because I wanted to figure out like where secondary is pulling some of this information from. 
And some of the decks are very clear and very obvious, but then others are not because then there's a little bit of a suggestion flip of, okay, this right. card could be used in two lists. And, I mean, we had hundreds of people submitting information today and it was amazing, but that's probably the easier side of it. The harder side of it is executing some yep. of these very specific bounties yeah. mm -hmm. where I think that some of the challenges for the cost, uh, I mean, for the benefit are unequal. Um, yeah. For example, the most, the two most annoying ones to me, at least are move at least seven cards in a match. Yes. Number one. And also destroy at least eight cards in a match. The two of those with the eight carders are really, really annoying given the cost. Um, yeah. I just, because they always retreat before you Heimdall. They always retreat before you Killmonger or Galactus. Like it is Correct. so, it is so tough to get those. And then you have to do it multiple times. And then for the same amount of time, you could have instead just like played a prop X armored deck, which is like, just, okay, build ongoing, call it a day. Like, correct. Some of these, they, they either need to up the reward on some of them or they, decrease the, the demand, like the move or, and destroy ones, like drop them to six cards in a match kind of a thing. Yep. Like, I don't know, like those one, cause there's some really easy bounties, like snap in a match. Okay. Yeah, but those one. those ones in particular kind of ruffle my feathers just a little bit because I sit on those needing to do those more than any other. Right. No, I totally agree. I think, um, like you say, we have down here. I'm not touching those bounties at the bottom. Destroy at least eight cards in a match. I'm not doing that. And I have both of them there. One is a 25 points for one, one twenty five for three. Uh, it, it's it's bananas. And we have another one up here too. Look at that. We have two. We have two. Two of the same bounties sitting here. I'm not touching those. Um, as you guys can see right now, I do have fill all four locations. That's pretty easy. Of course, if you're playing a Ultron deck or any other style of zoo with Shauna, right? Um, win with Miss Marvel. I'm planning to do that tonight. It's going to be pretty fun. I love Miss Marvel. She's definitely the forgotten young Avenger. Nobody's really playing her as much anymore. Maybe she needs a buff. Yep. Who knows? And then, of course, we have this right here win with these cards in the list yeah i have a move deck that i've been winning with and they have these two cards in the deck it's phenomenal so i'm just going to play that when the time comes all right win with doc ock eight times we can do that of course i mean listen i'm super pumped i do like the bounties where you have to play a certain amount of like four cost cards or win with two card pairings i'm a big fan of those i think those are super fun i'll do those 100 times if you want me to but as guest mentioned i am not a fan of move seven cards in a game i've done it that was one of my first set of bounties and i'm like never again um not doing the destroy thing either because again you're right people will retreat before the time comes or it's a very difficult task to do now, i don't know where they got the metrics from to say you can destroy at least eight cards in a match i don't know what possessed them to do that but nonetheless i agree with you 100 percent. i think we need to change either the points increase them or decrease the demand now ch guys listening and watching you guys know how you guys feel about the bounties. What is your favorite? What is your least favorite? And one of the comments down below that just express their feelings. We're going to give you guys a wonderful go pass. All right. So make sure you guys let us know down below which bounty is your favorite, which is your least favorite. We'll pick a winner before the next episode and grant you guys a wonderful go pass on Power On Gaming. Hey, hey, free stuff. I love you guys do. Of I course, love of course. And of course, we're going to our wonderful last topic of the evening. And that is, of course, the one and only new, 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 wonderful event called Leagues. Now, for those who don't know, Leagues came out today and it is something that was tested over overseas for a while. They got a lot of feedback from it. And basically, it reminds me a bit of Yu Gi Oh! when you just got to battle it out, get points. And as you remain at the top of the league, you win X amount of prizes in the given time. So this is one day, 18 hours. Yes, that means you have to grind, guys. That means you have to constantly play. I played three games and I was, the last time I, I saw this, I was number four, okay? Now, <laughs> an hour or so later, and I'm number 16. Um, so clearly, 
for me to catch up to the snap and cheese, I'm going to have to play this game nonstop for the next 24 to whatever, 30, 40 hours. Um, I'm super pumped about this. I love it. I definitely enjoy it. All I ask is they do not, and I repeat, they do not stick a exclusive variant behind one, two, and three. They better never, ever, 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 ever do that. Okay. I don't care about the emotes. Knock yourself out. Put all the exclusive emotes behind these as much as you want, but no exclusive variants. Nonetheless, pumped about this because you don't have to enter a new mode. You don't have to enter a new game. Just play ladder. And there you go. That is awesome, Second Dinner. That is fantastic. I'm loving the extra game modes. I'm loving the extra things you're adding to the game and you're keeping it nice and fresh. I think people who left the game should really consider coming back and trying these things out and see how they feel. Because not only does this mode give you that sense of, hey, I need to really play better, right? I need to know when to retreat, just like how Deadpool Dino was, but that was for bubs. Now for your cubes, you must play as best as you can and retreat when need to, to make sure you get and stay at the top of this list along with that ranking that people care so much about. Guess how you feel about this wonderful new event? I I, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I respect your honesty. So you're white. This is an event that promotes bad habits. It promotes True. It promotes turn one snaps. It promotes. Mm -hmm. It promotes okay. turn one snaps. Mm -hmm. um, it promotes Galactus play tremendously. Uh, and it very much so is imbalanced. So the scoring system, if you can, for, for those who are on the video side, Ken, can you go ahead and click that little question mark in that top corner up there? of the uh, the league yeah so it'll give the pop up so go ahead and hit the leagues and then in the top right is a question mark and it says you'll earn 100 points for a win and gain or lose 25 points per cube won or lost mm -hmm. so you can play galactus get your opponent to retreat for one cube and win 125 then you could go all in for a four cube match lose and still be up 25 cubes. Points, yeah. Well, points in the system, right. So this is, a, this is a game mode about wins. It is not a game mode about cubes. And the point system in that aspect is going to prom promote for the next two days, in my opinion, some bad habits. Um, it's going to promote some very bad core gameplay mechanics because to cheese the system it can easily be done by snapping aggressively and try to get your opponent to retreat so you can play less games and just get them out of there and you get a hundred cubes versus stay in it go for the eight cubes and maybe get three no it's much faster and much higher rate of I keep saying cubes, but it's points. It's a much higher rate of points to snap aggressively and retreat rather than actually try to play the game. So for me, I'm not a huge fan of this because it wasn't full. I don't think it was fully thought through to think about how it's going to affect the community over these two days. That's intriguing that you take that's your take on it. I'm very intrigued in that. Because I, I definitely do see the opposite in this. I really do see that it promotes more so of a, a style of cautious play. Because, like, if I want to continue climbing that ladder or keep my spot, I'm going to have to retreat if need be, whether my opponent snaps or not. I mean, right now, my opponent hasn't snapped yet, and I'm still climbing to go to infinite, so I don't know if that makes a difference. You're already infinite already, aren't you? No, I'm cl I'm in, I'm at ninety uh, four right now. So I'm on my way. And you were you were running into people doing exactly what you're saying right now. Soon as I went into the game mode, I recognized it immediately, and I was like, "Oh wait, this is the point system." Okay, time to play Galactus. Shit, because 
it it highly promotes hey do you have it okay no yes okay retreat if not just continue on and that's how you fly points uh the only thing i don't know and it was something i'm i'm a little scared to find out that's on uh -huh. um while you're while you're going on on this too is i'm going to dive into a very scary aspect of the game okay <laughs> um if you can do this in conquest to no negativity this is a pr oh. this is an even bigger problem i, I don't think I don't so know. i don't think conquest counts if if Gon if oh. conquest counts my opponent left massive. wow yeah if if, mm. Gala if 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 i go into this and i retreat and i lose 25 cubes Yes. Then it's then then just stay out of proving grounds and that's all you should be play, playing. Like I'm gonna snap on turn one on my on my uh on my game on my side, you know, not okay. on the broadcast screen. Do you want to share it? No, it's okay. I'm just because okay. uh, I'm explaining because it's a you know you, you forget sometimes yeah. it is a podcast they're listening. So I've that's gone true. into turn two. I have two yep. cubes on on the board on bet. Okay. I'm going to retreat right now. Okay and see what happens in conquest mode. If I go then, to retreat, see if anything pops up when I concede. Because if that, if it, if it does anything in this mode, I'm gonna be like, this is the stupidest thing ever. Yep, I lost 50 points in the league. I lost 50 points in the league. So literally just go into conquest mode and just snap, snap. snap. Eight yes. cubers, eight cubers, oh, eight yeah. cubers. Rich. So you're gonna be retreating for, for nothing. Or go in and just take down the con like this is this this was the biggest miss right here. This wow. was the biggest miss right here. And I literally just found this out live while we're recording this because I forgot to look it up earlier. And this further drives home the point that this is gonna promote some very, very bad play over the next two days. Very bad play for Marvel Snap. Whoa. Because they're habits you shouldn't be growing. They're just like yeah. abuse it and move on. And it makes me not want to play the game today and tomorrow because of this that we're going to have to deal with. And that sucks. Yes, you get free rewards. Woohoo. Just for it's playing the game in the way you already would. Woohoo. So, That's great. It's so weird. I, I still, like that person who just retreated, I still feel it's giving people good habits and teaching them know, to know when to retreat and when to stay in. The conquest mode thing, however, that is bad. You should not be able to get during conquest mode. But for ladder, I think I've experienced people retreating, not taking chances. But again, I'm not I'm not um infinite yet to see how the infinite side of things are. But wow, I, I see the I see the opposite. Nonetheless, this is why it's yin and yang, right? Yin and yang, black and white, right? Two sides of a coin. Um, you guys let us know down below what yeah. you see while you're playing in the next two days. You guys see what we're discussing. Or do you see your own thing? Um, nonetheless, again, guys, thanks for hanging out with us as always. If you guys want to see us in real life, we will be at SnapCon next week this time. So you might get an episode late or it might be super live. <laughs> Any way you look at it. And, of course, you get to see your wonderful friend, Cena. We'll let him know how much you guys missed him, of course. All right. Until the next time. Wait, did we, like, not argue this entire piece? Yeah, people is this, is this what Cino. it's like? No, but this yeah, is is this what it's like when Sino's not here? Really? Yes, yes. They it's, said you guys are being mean to me last episode. So, so I mean, we actually it, finished the podcast in an hour. We talked yes. six times. Yeah, this is interesting. I don't like it. No, no, no. no. It, it's no, we're gonna bring him back, but we need to do something because you guys have to be nicer to me. We gotta do a podcast in an, under an hour. You guys, let us know how you feel about this episode. We want to know. Leave a comment down below, please. Matter of fact, let us know how you guys feel about this episode and you get a battle pass on good old ST. You give it away all the shit. Ooh, okay, I like it. We almost, yeah. so we had a fake out in uh, exit and then we have to fake it. Yeah. And now, we gotta, now we gotta exit for real now. Still under an hour. We have you, sure, you, you, you sure now? I can actually play the outro music? Yeah, please. Let's do it.